welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a color spotlight on yellow ochre as a part of my color comparison watercolor series. So I will leave a playlist linked up in the iCards and in the description box down below so that you can go and check out the other videos in this series. We've done sap green, ultramarine blue, um, burnt sienna, and, and several others. So go check out that series if you're interested in more of these. But what I've done so far is I've put down a strip of black waterproof ink so we can test the transparency of the color and I've heat set it so that it won't smear. I have three brands to compare for you guys today. The Daniel Smith, the M. Graham, and the Winsor & Newton. Now all three of these are utilizing the exact same pigment, PY43, and I have them in my palette here. Now this top one here is Daniel Smith. This one is the Winsor & Newton, and the last one is the M. Graham. Now, some of the characteristics right off the bat that I can tell you are different about each of these is number one, first off, they all look a little different in color um, here in the palette. You can see that the Daniel Smith is the darkest and the most red, um, a little bit more like a raw sienna. The Windsor & Newton is somewhere in between, and the M. Graham is the most yellow, okay? It's the most golden yellow. They're all beautiful, they're all different and unique in their own ways, and we're going to swatch them out. But the other difference that I noticed right away was that, unsurprisingly, the M. Graham was the easiest to get the color to release off the palette from the dried paint because of that honey binder in there. The Daniel Smith wasn't too difficult. I just sprayed sprayed it ahead of time. And the Winsor & Newton was almost a nightmare, to be honest. Now, I have the half pan, to be fair, not the tube paint. So I'm not sure how that would re-wet, but the half pan was a little bit difficult to re-wet. So let's go ahead and get started swatching these out. I want to remind everybody to please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, that way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video, and leave this video a like and some comments because it helps more than you might think. It tells YouTube that you're interested, that you're enjoying these videos, and you'd like to keep them coming. So let's get started. I'm going to take the Daniel Smith to begin, and I'm going to just swatch it over. Now. One thing I want to note, yellow ochre is not supposed to be a fully transparent color. Okay, so unsurprisingly, it's, it is going to show up on the black line. This one is semi-transparent, and that's okay. We'll see how, when it dries, that it might shift and change. Next, I want to take... Oh, I have the Winsor & Newton on my brush and I don't want to waste that paint and rinse it off. So I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and do the Winsor & Newton. So I'm going to put that, swatch it out. I want to be fair. Now I have to tell you guys that I like to use yellow ochre most of the time all on its own. So I had a little bit of trouble coming up with ideas for color mixes for this video. But I do have a couple to show you. Here I have the M grams. I'm gonna get a little bit more because I didn't have quite enough on my brush. Now as always, I'm using the exact same paper for all these videos so that we're fair. Now, right off the bat, like I said, I noticed that the Daniel Smith's yellow ochre is just a little bit toasted. It's got that little bit of red in it. And I love Daniel Smith's yellow ochre. I also really love M. Graham's yellow ochre. As you can see, it's very transparent. It's drying transparent. As long as you don't over apply, like you don't go in super heavy and try and use it like a gouache almost. And it's very golden like sunshine. So I'm really happy and very pleased with it. And one of the unique things about Daniel Smith's is, is that I feel like it granulates just a tiny little bit. Not sure why that is, because because yellow ochre is not really a granulating color, but I think it's lovely. I think it's really beautiful. It's a little bit closer to a raw sienna, like I said, but it's 
it's truly beautiful. One thing to take note of with Daniel Smith, unfortunately, is that as I've started to run out of some colors and repurchase others, uh, repurchase the colors that I've run out of, I've noticed that the colors don't always match what was in the old tube. There's a little bit of inconsistency in color, so I can't guarantee to you that this is the yellow ochre that you'll receive. It might be a little different. So I was a little disappointed when I repurchased their Burnt Sienna because I love this burnt sienna that I had received years ago. It's its kind of like a purpley pinky red burnt sienna and I think it's gorgeous, but now it's more orange. So I did want to mention that. All right, so one of the color combinations that I absolutely love to do with most yellow ochres is I like to mix ultramarine blue with my yellow ochre to get somewhat of an undersea green, a very earthy neutral green. But here with the Daniel Smith, you can see that I have in fact mixed somewhat of a gray, I've mixed a gray, um, which is a little bit unexpected, but it is a lovely gray. Now I tell you why I think this happened, because there is some red in that burnt sienna, uh, in that yellow ochre, and because there's some red in there, it complemented the green and neutralized out. Here is the M. Graham. See how that's much more of a green? Now, it's obviously not the most vibrant green you've ever seen. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be more of like a green gray or like a, a very neutral green. Very earthy. And I find this color useful when I do things like wildlife. And here is the Windsor and Newton. Hmm. Well, it looks like, it looks like the Windsor and Newton did very much the same thing in a very similar way that the Daniel Smith did. But you can see they're all very different. Each one of these mixes is individually different. Um, typically, I get a very earthy, dark undersea green type shade. So I'm a little bit surprised by these results, but I'm not displeased with them at all. I like that gray. I think that is a gorgeous gray, especially for wildlife. And I'm pleased with the Windsor & Newtons as well. And the M. Graham got me a very deep kind of, very desaturated earthy green. Very nice. All right, so this time I decided I was gonna mix some phthalo blue into that yellow ochre. And just look how gorgeous that is. I hope this is showing up true on camera because it's like a really gorgeous dark kind of teal almost shade. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. And next we'll do the M. Graham. Now the M. Grams is more vibrant. Same phthalo blue for both. To be clear, I used the um, Daniel Smith's Thalo Blue. But look at that. That's gorgeous. Let's mix a little bit more of the yellow ochre into some of that. There we go. That is a nice neutral, a nice neutrally green. And then here is the Windsor & Newton. Windsor & Newton's is also very lovely and very saturated. Isn't that pretty? That's absolutely lovely. So as these original swatches are beginning to dry, the, the golden ochres up here, M. Graham I think is the most transparent. It is a good, good yellow ochre and it's the most golden and it's probably my favorite of the three. 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with Winsor & Newtons, but um, Daniel Smith's is a little bit more red. It also is a little tiny bit more opaque than the others, maybe, but I wouldn't call it opaque. I would say it's semi-transparent. It covered up the black line a little bit more, but it granulates, and as evidence of that, you can start to see the granulation in some of these mixes, and I'll do a close-up shot, but you can see where the, the two colors kind of separated from one another, and you get these really pretty little flecks in there, so that makes theirs, I think, the most unique. Um, so I like them all so far. All right, so I had an idea. Let's go for the most vibrant green mix we can get out of this. Let's try and mix our own sap green using phthalo green. So here is the Daniel Smith. I'm excited to see what that looks like when it dries. Here is the M. Graham. Now that is gorgeous. That's the way I'd expect the mixture to look. We can add a tiny bit more of the yellow ochre, I think, to that if we would like. There we go. Maybe earth it up just a little bit more. There we go. Beautiful. And here is the Windsor & Newton. Also really pretty. Need to get a little bit more. This is a gorgeous way to make a sap green. All right, so I'm going to show you one more color mix and then we're going to do a flow test to see how they bloom and move wet into wet. So I'm going to mix um, the yellow ochre with some pyrrole red to see what kind of like a earthy kind of orangey salmony color that we can get. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite mix with yellow ochre, regardless of the brand. What colors do you like to mix with yellow ochre? What is your favorite mixture? Let me know. So I'm going to take that pyrrole red. I'm going to mix it. Ooh, that's really pretty. Ooh, I like that. Okay, I really like that. Hold on one second. I can't wait to show it to you. So the first is the Daniel Smith. And look at that, you guys. That is gorgeous. That's really pretty. I could see me using this for animals, wildlife. That's really nice. It's like this terracotta kind of shade. It would, be, but mm, it's a little bit more pinky maybe than terracotta, but that would be gorgeous for bricks, buildings, wildlife, really anything you wanted. Now let's do the Windsor, uh, the M. Graham, excuse me. So here's the M. Graham. And right away, it's gorgeous and it's very similar, but I know I like that one better. I feel like the Daniel Smith's is a clearer mix. There's more clarity to it than this one has. I'm not sure why, but I think this has better clarity of color. And then we're going to do the Windsor & Newton. So here's that one. Well, the Windsor & Newton is more, more orangey maybe. A little bit more muted, I think, than the other ones. Let's get that to come down a bit. All right, so that that one's my favorite so far, but we'll have to see what happens when it dries down, that mix. So I'm going to wet out this area here, and I'm going to do a little flow test for you. 
So this one is the Daniel Smith. So if I just drop it in, it's blooming beautifully in there. It's just flowing very nice, nice diffused edges. It's flowing gorgeous, softening out nicely. So that is that one. I'm just gonna go ahead and wet the other areas too. I don't want them to be too wet. I don't want puddles. I just want a nice even application of water. Okay, the next is the M. Graham. Let's just do a couple dots. Oh yeah, look how that one moves. Gorgeous. And the color is very intense. I might not have got enough on that original swatch up there. But you can see it is very intense. And then here's the Windsor and Newton. Also flowing pretty well, not, not, e not as quickly, not as immediate as that one, but it's definitely still flowing excellent. But it doesn't, it's not moving quite like the other two. That's just my opinion. But that could be an, an advantage also. All right, so I've dried all this up and let's go ahead and take a look at my final swatches and I'll give my final thoughts to wrap up. So we've got Daniel Smith, M. Graham, and Windsor and & Newton. All three of the yellow ochres are PY43. I know that M. Graham is the natural yellow ochre, okay, because my tube says so. I suspect very much that the Windsor & Newtons is the synthetic and I think the Daniel Smith is also natural. I can tell because it granulates and that's usually a giveaway that a pigment is natural. Each of them are unique and different. Even though they're the same pigment, they bring something different to the table and they mix differently. So the Daniel Smith is the most red and it granulates. And I think that for the, that reason, those characteristics make it special and unique in its own right. I love the gray that I was able to mix with ultramarine blue with this. This is a gorgeous gray mixture. And now that I'm sure of how to mix that, I'm definitely gonna use that in wildlife more because I often use burnt sienna. I mean, I often use ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, but I've never thought um, I could get a gray that way. So that'd be a very natural and cohesive gray when I'm painting wildlife. I like the greens also that I was able to mix. This was the phthalo green, uh, the phthalo blue, and this one's the phthalo green. And they're both pretty gorgeous. This is like a, a really like a gray teal color and there's little flecks of granulation in there of the gold. I think this would be gorgeous if I was doing something like an oceanscape or something like that. And this color here that I mixed with the Pyrol Red, it's like a pinky terracotta kind of shade. It's gorgeous. It would also be good for wildlife, I think, but also things like brick and buildings, etc., etc. It flowed and bloomed really beautifully. It just, it just did everything that I would want that yellow ochre to do. So I'm very pleased with that one. The, burnt, uh, the uh, M. Graham is the most yellow. It's the most transparent when it's diluted and it is the most yellow, I think, and the most golden. It's like a ray of sunshine. I love glazing with this in my watercolor paintings. I was very pleased with the greens I was able to mix with it. It does flow and blossom really well wet into wet, so I'm happy with it. I will definitely repurchase M. Graham's Yellow Ochre. In fact, I have, and it's on my main watercolor palette. I like both of these a whole lot for a different reason. So I think it's worth having both in my opinion. And then the Windsor & Newton is very lovely. It's transparent. There's nothing really wrong with it. I think that it has a tendency to be quite chalky and mass tone if you, if you put too much. Oh, we didn't do a glaze in this week's episode. Um, usually we do one glaze down the side but the another reason I didn't want to do that is because this is really not traditionally thought of as a glazing uh, color because it's semi-transparent. Overall I think that theirs did performed very well. I can't complain there's nothing wrong with it but I did think that the mixes came out just a little bit flat and uninteresting looking compared to some of the others that I got so it's really not my favorite. I'll also say that it was the most difficult to re-wet and get out of the half pan. The M-gram was the most 
easy to re-wet because of that honey binder. But depending on where you live, what your climate is like, if you if you live in a very humid environment, Emgram might not be your paint. I live in a very dry climate, so I love the ability to re-wet them. But if you like to take your paints out plein air, uh, painting or if you live in a very humid environment they're not probably going to dry they might not dry quick enough for you to take in a sketchers box or something like that with you they might get runny on you so uh, in that instance I'd steer you toward the Daniel Smith but you leave me a comment and you let me know what is your favorite out of all three of these sound off down below give me your opinion and what mixture do you like best with your yellow ochre so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.